Mr. G. What's good, brother? All good, man. I feel blessed right now to be here with KT, the arch degree. Man, you know the feel is mutual, man. Everybody here to see you. Yo, no, nah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten so many requests. Even though you the honey man, for some reason, since they can't reach you, mm -hmm. I get all the questions. Right, 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 right. But you know, you the, you the Honduran man. So, you know, when they hear anything about Honduras, Dr. Savey, they coming straight to you. That's the fact. Yeah. My DMs is too crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I wanted to first, first, I want to thank you for coming. Hey. Second, I want to thank you for everything you do for me and my family. A lot of people uh -huh. don't know um, most of the stuff that's happening since, how long we've we been dealing with each other, like four years now? It's been, it's about to be five. Going on five. Oh, we're half a decade already. My whole life changed since that day I met you on the set. We ain't gonna talk about the set right now, because we ain't gonna go there. Because <laughs> they want to know. Yeah, true, they true. They want to know. Now, bro, my question is, um, I got a question from a young lady named Cece. She told me I could say her name. Okay. Cece on Instagram. What's Cece want to know? Nah, Cece want to know what's in that honey that made her feel like she's 21 years old again. And Cece's about, I think, 40. No. And but half? She, she Cut says half. she put that sun, that honey someplace where the sun don't shine, and she's a whole different lady now. Wait. Okay. So it's a lady. Yes. And she put the honey where the sun don't shine. So I can assume she put it somewhere in her flowery place. Exactly. Okay, okay. Well, before you get there, because okay. she asked me what is it that's, because I gave it to her for her eyes. Mm -hmm. But she did some kind of research, and she was like, you know what? If it could do that there, maybe it could help me there. Mm. So she asked me exactly what was in it, and I was, what, what? what made that happen and I couldn't technically tell her so I told her that I would ask you this and maybe when she see this interview so this this part of the interview was for Cece got you got you well so women deal with a lot of issues down there these days and the main reason is because it don't get in the sun like they strapped up they wearing jeans pants panties everything you know then they live in, in a temperate region, and the temperate region is like a region where you're going through seasons. It's not tropical. She lives in New York. That's what I'm saying. So you're dealing with the pollution, you're dealing with all those frequencies, and you're dealing with the climate. So, of course, if it's cold, no woman is going to have it out like that. But if you're in the tropics, like, you'll have on a, a sarong or a free-flowing dress, and you won't have no panties underneath it, so it's breathing. You go to the beach, if ain't nobody around, then a lot of women, they're going to they gonna sunbathe with nothing on. You know what I'm saying? Go skinny dipping. Salute to my ladies in Honduras. Well, you salute. <laughs> so breast as well as the vagina are supposed to be in the sun. It's supposed to be kissed by the sun. When women put their vagina in the sun, then it gets hit with all of the full spectrum energy of the sunlight, and it purifies it. It cleanses it. So we think because, you know, women, are, they, they menstruate, it's all about the moon. And yeah, the moon, they go with the moon cycle, but they also connect it to the sun too, hence why men are attracted to women. And women are attracted to men because the sun and the moon have a relationship together. So I tell women, whenever you get a chance, you know, put those breasts in the sun, you know what I mean? Take the panties off and put that in the sun, let it hit it. So why would the honey help? I was about that. The honey's going to help because the honey is like liquid sunlight. They call it sun gel down in Honduras. They do. So this is a way that women can actually hold the sun in their hand because you can't just grab light. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you see it hitting the wall, hitting your face. You can't grab it. Mm -hmm. But with the honey, you can actually grab light. So she took that, that honey and she put it up there and what ended up happening was all of the phenols, which are these light-based molecules that are found in the nectars of plants. The bees go around and they collect all that nectar and that nectar is saturated with all of these molecules that are like little book bags, little tubberware full of sunlight and they stitch it together in a very intricate pattern that no man can do. And when they put it in there, I mean, we always call Earth Mother Nature, right? 
we always call our woman our old earth, right? We always mm -hmm. compare them to the earth. So True. naturally, if they're having problems with picos, with, uh, um, with fibroids, if they're having yeast infections, if they're having any issues at all down there, even venereal diseases, the honey is gonna help to balance the pH, balance the whole environment down there so that they live a more healthier life. Oh man, okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And one of the things that I, I'm blessed to be able to visit you at your crib, right? Yes. We're not at your crib now. We, I not think right we now. feel it's like not, we It's not too far from it. Fact. <laughs> like we, we're in the Queen's Palace right now. You know what I'm saying? But at your house, I actually seen the honey, the bees that make this honey. Yes. I thought it was a gnat, to be honest with you, because it was so it's tiny. so small. So, Ken, right. what's the difference between that tiny black bee Mm -hmm. and the regular bee that I'm used to seeing. Right, it's like, it's like looking at a kitten and looking at a King Corso, right? Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the difference, difference in the size, size, right? Mm -hmm. So the bees that we know, Apis mellifera, if you look at that name, uh, keep, Apis. Keep it in English. Right, right. Apis glutathione. Oh, I, <laughs> I got it. When you say Apis, Apis is a bull. Mm -hmm. All right. When you look at Kemet, when you look at um, ancient history and you look at the term apis, it represented a, a bull or a cow. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting that when they named and they gave bees their scientific name, the honeybee, they named it apis. Like, why would you name it that? Well, when we think of cows in our society, what do we use cows for the most? Of course, we beef and burgers, but usually what, what, what do we use cows for? Milk. For milk, mm -hmm. right? So these apis mellifera, <laughs> why not? I mean, right. tomato, 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 right. tomato. But when you're looking at these bees, they were, they were actually uh, generated in a the lab. They were manipulated by man, these apis bees, these honey bees that we're familiar with, so they can treat them just like cows. So the milk that everybody gets is from a clone cow. It's just like the, the bananas. It's the same banana copied over and over again, the same cow copied over and over again, so that they're able to milk it and utilize that milk for the milk industry, right? Cheese and everything like okay. that, butter, all that. So the honeybee, they're milking it for its honey. But the honey that this honeybee makes, because it was manipulated already, it's predominantly sugar-based. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that there's no um, honey from these hybrid bees out there that haven't helped people because mm -hmm. it has obviously yeah. people been helped um, especially when you talk about the manuka honey people mm -hmm. people love the manuka but the manuka ain't based on the bee the manuka is based on the flower that the bee is pollinating in New Zealand so it's a specific plant that it's pulling those properties from you know. But even in comparison, Manuka holds nothing to the stingless bee. Facts. So that little bee is mm -hmm. the stingless bee. So they call it the stingless bee because it doesn't sting you. It has a very small stinger and it won't hurt you like that. But when you put it in your eye, it stings. Yes, you can put the honey in the eyes. Yes, you can put the honey in the jar in the eyes. This is the same honey. Now, how do you do this? If you have someone to help administer it, even better. But if you're doing it yourself, it's no problem. You want to get the honey. I prefer that you do it at night with low lighting so your eyes can dilate. You want your pupils open because a closed mouth does not get fed. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sit in the chair and you're gonna look up at the ceiling, all right? You're gonna open this honey up. You're gonna pull some out. You don't need a lot because you only put in a drop of honey in each eye. So you're gonna drop one drop in this eye, and you're gonna drop another drop in that eye, and you're gonna keep your tin up because you want the honey to seep back into the brain. You want to mix with your tears and the waters of the eye. So you're gonna spell things with your eyes closed. You're gonna spell O. You can spell T, and you're gonna do an X. You can spell your name, you can write a letter. I don't care, you write some lyrics down. But you're gonna spend at least a good 10 minutes doing this. And then you're gonna blink. You're gonna start blinking, and the blinking is gonna make your eyes start to tear. And as all of the tears start up and spilling down, 
your tears are filled with dopamine and other neurotransmitters that are gonna mix with the honey and it's gonna coat your eye and coat your brain and continue to get all of those great potent properties in all of the areas that they need to be. Once you're done with that, you're gonna get a, a damp towel or a damp paper towel and you can start to wipe the excess away. And when you wipe the excess away, give yourself about a good 15, 20 minutes and you'll start noticing a refreshing feeling. You'll even taste the honey in the back of your mouth. And don't be alarmed when you notice mucus start to drop to the back of your throat because that's all the mucus and inflammation you didn't even know you had in your brain coming down so your body can expel it and get it out the system. Do not refrigerate this honey. It's best to sit it in a bowl of some hot water, the jar or the bottle before you apply it to make it nice and thin because in the cold it gets thick. But that is how you take the honey and you will be on your way to seeing the world with a lot more clarity. But yeah, this bee is like this small. Smaller. Small, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Little now, I'm, I'm doing it this small just for the camera. Okay, okay. Cause if I do it like this, they gonna be like, bro, your fingers is touching. <laughs> so this little itty bitty bee, along with the rest of his colony. You know what I compare the size to? What's that? You have a, the number two pencil, you have a break, break the tip. Little tip off. It looks about yeah, that size. It is, they just like little black dots. Yeah. When you pull it, when you look at it closer, you'll start seeing the form of the yeah. bee. But just flying around, they just look like little gnats, okay. right? So only once a year, this honey is made that these, that these bees ended up creating. And they do so by going in one of the most potent and powerful and rich environments on this planet, and that's in Honduras. So we, we see parks, naturescapes throughout America, but a lot of places still got poles and you know wires going underground and people are still living on there, going there, pulling stuff up. But when you go in Honduras, a lot of that land is still untouched and has been untouched for hundreds, even thousands of years. So you have these rich, super strong and potent herbs that have these small flowers and these small access points that this big King Corso bee can't, can't get, get up in there. Uh -huh. But these little gnats, they can fly and get up in there. And when they get in there, they're able to pull this nectar and pull these properties of these plants that no one has access to. Because even, even man, like we're, we're using our hands, we're using our equipment, and we might be able to preserve a good amount, mm -hmm. but it's never gonna be 100%. But these bees, they got like nano size surgeon hands and they could just go and grab and pick and choose exactly what they want so they can make the perfect elixir from God because it's, straight from him, straight from the creator to us, you know? So yeah, these bees are extremely small. And even though they don't have a stinger, don't be fooled, they still quite dangerous. That was my next question. I was gonna ask you, mm -hmm. I know they can't sting you, but me being from Honduras, right. I've heard of fatalities with these stingless bee hunt. Like Mortal Kombat? Exactly. Like finish them? <laughs> finish them. <laughs> yeah. So, how do you ex explain them not being able to sting you, but it's been several cases in Honduras where the person lost his life trying to extract this honey? Right, so the thing about this honey is it's extremely special because not only do the bees make it, but the people that are over the bees are hand selected and that it's actually passed down generation to generation. That's where I wanted you to go. Yeah, so, so, so nobody can't just walk up and say, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You have to be picked and, and you're chosen based on energy signature because bees, when, they, when they, uh, uh, their wings are working and they're, they're creating that frequency to fly, they're creating uh, tones, just like on pianos and guitars mm -hmm. and when you make music, they're of a frequency. That frequency gets put inside this honey and the people that deal with these bees, they have to resonate. They have to be of a certain frequency too to even be allowed. Now, if somebody who is not right, or let me just say righteous, 
comes around these bees and they're not supposed to be there, then they, they turn into a swarm. And what they do is they enter all of the orifices of the person. And the orifices would be the, the holes of the body. They're going to go in the ears, the nose, the mouth. If your booty out, <laughs> it's going up there too. You know what I'm saying? It, huh? And it's going to just saturate and clog up all these spaces till you can't breathe, till you go crazy. And then you'll fall on the floor dead. And then they'll, and most of them sacrifice themselves in order to do that. Some will end up flying back out of you. But majority of them done, done took themselves out to take you out the game too. Damn. Yeah. So if you're not righteous. These bees is gangster. Because I, I mean, you know, when I see honeybees, they come after you in swarms. They sting in you. And a lot of them die because, you know, the stinger gets ripped off and, it, you know, and that's it. You get antibodies. The next time you come around a bee, you probably ain't gonna get stung because you got the antibodies mm-hmm. now. But nah, stingless bees ain't like that. They they, they taking you out the game. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think I seen every interview about this honey because one of the main reasons I was interested in this honey, because mm-hmm. my wife, yes, she actually was wearing glasses for mm. six years maybe. Right. And um, after getting the mesunecta, mm-hmm. after three weeks she didn't use her glasses anymore. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I want to thank you. I don't have to buy no designer glasses no more. You got it. (laughs) And um, so every interview you did after that, I was like, man, I wanted to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. You said something about ants and these bees and how it explained um, a form that it took in the -hmm. the ground. Like, can you elaborate on that? Right. So... When people find out you can use this honey for your eyes, you know, they, first of all, connecting honey to the eye, to eye health already has them taken back. Mm-hmm. But what blows them back even more is that the, eye, the honey actually goes inside the eye. They still thinking that you take, you take it in, you know, you ingest it and it's going to help the eyes, but you put it in the eyes. And when you put it in there, what it does is it coats and it cleanses the eyes because the eyes are a clock for the body. They help with tuning, timing the body. It's one of the main reasons that we are able to keep our health on point is by us putting ourselves in the sun with full spectrum light in order for that light to heal our body. Now the sun being this, this, this energy that we all need is something that doesn't just connect to us, it connects the entire planet. All the animals are connected to the sun. And that's one of the main ways that those, those priests, those divine people that are able to, to deal with this honey and harvest this honey, that's one of the ways that they even find out that it's time to harvest the honey again is by way of the sun. Now, you might think when I say that, that I'm saying, oh, there's you know, a certain way the, the light from the sun is hitting or there's a certain angle or something like exactly. that. But it's like, no, it ain't. It don't got nothing to do with the sun, but it got everything to do with the sun. So they take a little piece of the honeycomb from the previous year. They take this piece and they sit it on the ground. And you would think they sit it on the ground, eventually all the bugs are about to come out because it's like, it's honey, right? Mm-hmm. So you just, you just sit there, you just wait a second. And what you'll start to see is you'll see an ant come out. And you see a couple more ants. And all of a sudden you see all these ants come out. Now, of course, if ants are coming, they coming to eat. Mm-hmm. You doing a barbecue, you doing a birthday party, you they, leave any sweets, any food out at all, them ants is busy. coming, uh-huh. right? So I'm thinking that's what's gonna happen with the, you know, the ants is gonna come, they're gonna eat the honey. But now that ain't what they did. So the ants come out and they form into a line and they circle around the comb. They make a circle. They don't go in and encroach upon the honey and start eating it together. No, they just stay in this circle. The other ants that don't go in that circle, they start making lines from the circle going outwards. And after a while, because our mind deals with patterns, you looking at this figure, this formation, and you like, wait a minute, 
are they making the sun? So in order for the people to know that it's time for the next season, that the next season is ready for the honey, they have to put the previous season's honey down and wait for the ants to display a sign of nature. Like the bat sign? <laughs> like the bat symbol. <laughs> they put a sun glyph on the ground. And it's so deep because when you look at the movies, you got Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. So you got the relationship because bees and bees and uh, ants are actually related. They're pretty much the same insect. One just has wings One on it. Fly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One could fly. So you have this, this, this relationship in nature between the two where the ants actually are communicating to us by way, because the bees aren't, why, why aren't the bees doing it? No, the bees is like, we too busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pun intended. We too busy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, go and let them know, yeah, everything's ready. All right, thank you for that explanation about the sun. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of crazy. You know I love talking about the sun. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, my next question is, when you came to New York at the Alkaline Oasis, Yes. Shameless plug. <laughs> Nine, 958 Halsey. Oh. oh, okay. You did a, a small video and the stingless bees was like in a log. And you explained something about they created like a force field that no other bee could get in. Um, can you break down why they do that? Yeah, so so the bees, they, they actually build their home with inside of like abandoned logs. They, they build their homes in just about anything in nature that they can, that's hollow. And what happens is they have, they have it broken up into sectors. They have an area where the, the, the honey is stored at in these honey pots, kind of like that's what these, these jars are called. I call them the honey pot after that, you know what I'm saying? But then they have an area where- I just realized that. That's what I'm saying. They did little honey pots, you know? So the honey pots and then the cob drops, you know? So the honey drops, <clears throat> I mean, the, um, the honey is stored inside of these, these honey pots inside of one sector of the hollowed out log. And then they have this other area where they have the next generation uh, um, growing up and getting ready because these bees only last a season, you know, so they got to they got to get to it and get the next generation going, you know. But they have a um, they have one side of the log closed off. They got the other side of the log closed off. So then you might say, OK, how they get in and out? Then how are they going out in nature, getting all of these the nectar and everything to make the honey? Exactly. So they got they got one entrance, which is also the exit and it sits in the middle of the log. And they actually form this hole in everything, right? Out of the, um, um, what you would call like prop propolis or propolis, which are like little resin and pieces of trees and stuff like that and mm -hmm. bark. And one of them stands guard, like a bouncer at a club. Devo. They stand right there, right? Like Devo, just, just like, cause he has to make sure, you know, because the, the, even though the hole is small, any, any bug of that size could get in and out of there. They go back and, yo, the honey? I found the honey, Where you know? Mm -hmm. So he stands guard and he's the one that dictates who can leave and who can come back in. And he stands right there. So you'll see him, if you ever look at, at, at the log, you'll see this one little bee standing guard and he'll stand to the side and you'll see a bee fly out and then you'll see a bee fly in and the traffic's crazy how they're able to coordinate all of this with this one entrance. Imagine New York having one entrance. Crazy. Getting in and mm -hmm. out with a bouncer there though, you know? But nothing gets held up mm -hmm. and, they, and they flow. Mm, okay, yeah. that's crazy though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is the question that I've been dying to ask you. Oh, stop. We just, okay, okay. It's heating up. It's heating up. At the Alkaline Oasis. Right. I'm going to keep mentioning my story. You now. better mention <laughs> it. I have a customer named Mr. Jeffries. Okay. Mr. Jeffrey has diabetes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Jeffrey said this is the only honey he can consume and put in all his food. So mm. we can't keep it on the shelf. Shout out to Mr. Jeffries. Shout out to Mr. Jeffries. He comes through and at one of your lectures, I heard you say something about Trey Hyalos, I believe the name is. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why diabetic people can consume this honey, which is sweeter than sugar. Right, right. With no 
um, when damage. damage. Right, right. So people here, you taking honey when you got diabetes. Any diabetics watching right now, they like, bro. I mean, I was following y'all to this <laughs> point right here. You know what I'm saying? But yes, yeah, so diabetes is a situation where um, you're having a problem processing sugar. You know what I mean? Uh, and when we say sugar, people automatically think of table sugar, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, or artificial sugar. But no, we, we, we utilize carbohydrates in our body to build our mass for energy for different, for different things. And we consume carbohydrates in order to keep our fire burning and keep everything going. Mm -hmm. So as sugar's in our blood, it needs to be able to enter inside of our cells because that's where it's gonna get broken down at. It's not meant to stay in the bloodstream. Because when sugar stays in the bloodstream, what's our temperature? What's our normal temperature? Like 98.6, 98 98 almost 100. Mm -hmm. If you were to warm water up to 100 degrees and dump sugar up in there, it'll take a little while, but that sugar's gonna dissolve in that hot water and eventually it's gonna do what? It's gonna turn to syrup. Mm -hmm. So now you got syrup getting pumped around your body, right? And your liver's gonna get overworked, your body's gonna shut down, your hemoglobin's gonna get covered like a like a M and M, like a Skittle with a candy coating, right? So like we got a apple. <laughs> like caramel apple, right? And we have to figure out how to get the sugar back in the cell. So that's what diabetes is. Diabetes one and two, the only difference is one of it is at the site where where the the insulin is actually created at which is the beta cells of the pancreas and then the other diabetes diabetes 2 is actually at the destination where the receptor sites are where the sugar goes into the cell so if there's a problem at the radio station or if there's a problem at the home receiving the radio signal that's what diabetes is so that means it's about the sh in both situations it's a lot of sugar in the blood, so that's called hyperglycemia, mm -hmm. high sugar levels, high sugar levels. So how do we deal with higher sugar levels? You know what I mean? When we eat, how do we, how do we, how do we deal with that when, when things have sugar in it? So you gotta eat foods that have a low glycemic index, meaning that even though it has sugar in it, natural mm -hmm. sugars, when you consume it, your body breaks it down and digests it so slow that as opposed to it being like a waterfall or a deluge, mm -hmm. it's more like you having a faucet and you can control the amount of water that flows out that faucet rather than it just splashing out and getting water everywhere. So that's what these low glycemic foods do. So now our intestines, when it breaks the food down, it's gonna release sugar into the blood slowly, slowly. Okay. slowly. So. You mentioned the word, the magical word, trehalulose. Get to my word. All right, trehalulose. This is, this is the rarest sugar on the planet. And it's only found in stingless bee honey with some of the highest numbers being in the Honduran, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the real one. So trehalulose is a isomer of sucrose. Isomer means that it's the same um, molecule but there's, there's a certain adjustment in there. There's something that changed to make it slightly different. So the bees do this special like quantum effect to mm -hmm. the honey called a double displacement reaction. They take the sugar that's inside of the nectar, right? Which is sucrose, which we all know sucrose, mm -hmm. and they take the sucrose and they convert it into trehalulose, mm. all right? Through the enzymes that the bees have. So the bees do that. Now that it's trehalulose, because they changed the bonds in this molecule, when you take this sugar in, now the sugar's gonna break down slower. So let's say you ate something sweet and you got diabetes and normally, you know, three hours it is digest and it's all in your blood, just rushes mm -hmm. in your blood. With the trehalulose, it goes from three to nine hours. Damn. You see what I'm saying? That's a lot slower. Now your body can deal with the sugar coming in the bloodstream a lot more efficiently. So this is why diabetics can take it. But in addition to that, trehalulose and other properties of the stingless bee honey is a, a, a protector of the pancreas. 
Mm. And the pancreas is the main site that deals with diabetes. So not only is it helping with it being with the low glycemic index and it's slowing everything down, it's also helping and it's healing the pancreas itself. Yo, this honey is like all in one because thank you for explaining that. Good question though. I, I myself, maybe you could help me with this. Okay. Everybody who think about this honey think about their eyes or their vagina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I myself, I was cleaning out my basement. I wet my foot mm. and I was like, all right, I'm gonna deal with that mm. later. I just wanted to get the basement clean. Mm. I left my sneakers on and by the time I got home, I had a like athlete's foot. Right. My, it was itching, itching, itching. Right, right. I'm buying everything dealing with athlete's foot. Antifungal. Antifungal, right. all this. My wife, shout out to my queen. She said, not you put some of the honey on it? Aye. I remember, cause you know why she made, asked me to do that? Mm -hmm. Cause I remember when you came to New York, you cut your hand open. That's right, can you, where? You know, I don't where know is which it? one. Where is it? <laughs> you cut your hand open and less than 48 hours later, you, put, you came back and you showed me this was hanging two days ago. That's right. She kept that in mind, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. She kept that in mind, so I put it on there, man. And it's like three days, 72 hours later, yes. I can see the skin crawl coming back. coming back. But what I did also with some of the sea moss you blessed me with, I put the honey inside the sea moss and it was like I got a new foot. I ain't gonna take my, <laughs> sh my shoe off the show y'all. Don't do them like that, I, don't I do them like, like that. I got a new foot. <laughs> mm. So what is it in that that you can actually take it, but then again, you can put it on your, on your body like that. So, so we got, we got, the purples, because this this is your favorite right here, right? Why don't you go ahead and take mm. one of the, take take one of those things on out? Look at that color. The funny thing about it, everybody talk about Dr. Sebi and sea moss, mm -hmm. but I traveled with Dr. Sebi for the last couple of years of his life. He always talked about conscious Christmas. Yes. He never talked about the sea moss we have in Honduras. Mm -mm. He said sea moss is good, but this is gold. That's the gold right there. Yeah. So. This with honey is something special, right? Come on. So, I ain't going to take my boot off. So the, <laughs> the conscious crispus translates to curly cartilage. Okay. Curly cartilage. The most abundant protein in the body is collagen. And in order for us to make bone, in order for us to make cartilage, in order for us to make those connect the connective mm -hmm. tissue, we need collagen in order to do that. And that's what sea moss is. It's a plant version of connective tissue. It's a plant version of cartilage. It's the plant version of our bones. Can I you know tell you I mean? about my knee real quick? Go ahead, of course. I used to play pro ball overseas. You? Where he at? I ain't, I ain't gonna go there, but I used to play pro ball. Where he at? I heard D he say he get busy, but we ain't gonna talk about that. Oh man. I was walking for years, bone on bone. That's why I retired, because um, I was walking bone on bone for years. The doctors in New York told me cartilage couldn't grow back. Dr. Sebi saw me walking around Honduras, Usha. Everybody else in Honduras thought I was just trying to be cool walking with a bob. Yeah, with your bob. <laughs> My leg was hurting. <laughs> but Dr. Sebi said, you got a hiccup in your get along or something like oh, that. Oh, man. And I was like, yeah, I hurt my knee playing ball years ago. I just got used to walking like that. Uh -huh. he, he told me, you need some sea moss. That's the first time I ever heard of sea moss. Mm. He told me, you need some sea moss. I have x-rays to this day of my knee with no cartilage and x-ray with cartilage in with the middle. Car, right. Taking that sea moss just changed my life. I'm walking again. I'm boiling again. <laughs> I'm boiling again. <laughs> And um, it's so you saying that, um, so how does that get to the skin? Right. Because it grew skin back. So, so the, 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 the fact that it's called curly cartilage mm -hmm. already tells you, okay, it's the plant analog of that. But it's made up of the same properties that make the connective tissue up. It's just in plant form. Mm -hmm. So your knee is, and our joints have, the end of the bones have a cap of cartilage over it. Yeah. And between that, because they don't touch, mm -hmm. they can't touch. If, if you rub two things together, what do you get? You get friction, friction. and you get heat, you mm -hmm. get inflammation, Fire. right? Mm -hmm. 
So between those two uh, bones and the cartilage, the caps of the cartilage is something called synovial fluid. Okay. This is like sea moss gel. Okay. We got sea moss gel in our, in our kneecaps, anything in our bends. fingers, yeah. anything that bends, mm -hmm. there's sea moss gel there, mm -hmm. right? And the proteins that's in there all got a negative charge, so they repel each other. Mm -hmm. And because they repel each other, when the pressure from your leg comes down, mm -hmm. the cartilage at the bottom, at the top, the cartilage at the bottom can't touch because it's being a, a repulsion, just like with magnets. You ever try to put south and south together mm -hmm. on a magnet? It don't, I don't care mm -hmm. how much you bench, yep. it, ain't it ain't happening. happening. True. You, could, you, could, you could curl to a ton. It's not you happening. is not putting those two ends mm -hmm. together. So that's what happens with the knee. Okay. But when you have inflammation, it changes the charge. Mm. So now you got pluses and minus. Mm -hmm. It turns liquid. That's why it gets swollen, because it's bulk water, not structured mm -hmm. water no more. And now the bones can collapse on each other, yeah. rub, and all that happens. Not a good feeling. So this gives the negative charge back. This also attracts fibroblasts, which are the specialized cells that rebuild connective tissue. You see, Got it. but what you did was something even even further. Put that honey right. in you it. You <laughs> mixed the gel with the honey, and you made you made a stingless bee hydrogel. Okay. And what a hydrogel is able to do is heal almost any wound of the skin. I have, um, matter of fact, you, you're familiar with the situation. You, uh, you you referenced her to me. She had a brother that was suffering from bed sores mm. in the hospital. Remember? That's a fact. And she was like, um, nothing's working. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything you can suggest? So mm -hmm. I suggested the same thing to her. I said, you need to make the hydrogel. She was like, what's that? I was like, you got some of the honey. Talking about my room brother, right? No, no, Jay, Jackie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. True, yeah. True, true. So, mm -hmm. so I said, you got some of the honey, mix it with the gel. So they mixed it together, put it, there, put it on the back bar, on the bed sores, and the doctors was like, yo, what how happened? is this healing? Yeah, what happened exactly. and everything like that? They always ask that. They ask me, how did I get cartilage back? I mentioned Dr. Sebi's name. It's like uh, if I said something about Lucifer in a, <laughs> in a building. They all looked at each other, but the Jamaican next were like, keep it going, oh, my youth. I'm right. Like, oh, he know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know them Jamaicans know about that sea um, moss, you know. But yeah, that's 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 how it happens. Um, the the sea moss is made up of the same properties that our body uses in order to build all these things, and it also um, stimulates the cells mm -hmm. to come out and start to build that tissue back up. It's almost immediate, though. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like because it's in your foot. It's the first food. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, true, you know, true. life comes from the ocean. Food comes from the ocean mm -hmm. first. Before there was plants on land, there was plants in the water, and the algae are the first plants, the red, the brown, and the green. KT, mm -hmm. going to your crib, right. which nobody knows where it's at. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see that you store this honey in glass jars. In one of your lectures in New York, I heard you talk about you have to activate the honey. Mm -hmm. What that mean? Well, the honey is, as I mentioned earlier, sun gel, right? It's liquid sun. Who called it the sun gel? Oh, the people call it the sun gel. From where? The Hondurans, the people I in didn't Honduras. I want you to say my country. Yeah. Ahead, okay, <laughs> yes, my bad. All right. <laughs> yes, your homeland, the people of Honduras, that's what they refer to it as. Right. So I'm not making this up because it's just some cool title. Mm -hmm. That's what was told to me, right? Mm -hmm. So this sun gel is called that because essentially all of this is made from the sun because the bees have to pollinate everything. The bees pollinate the plants. The plants are performing photosynthesis in order to make all the fruit, all the food, all the herbs, everything that we utilize is based on the bees pollinating it, is based on the sun coming in and the plants performing photosynthesis, right? If the sun is responsible for the creation of this honey, if they activate and stimulate the bees to make this honey, if they're responsible for the growth of the fruit and the herbs and the flowers and the food that this honey is sourced from, then it would only make sense that if this honey in its final form is put in the sun, that the sun's gonna have some type of effect on it. So the people down in Honduras, they don't use the honey unless it's activated. You know, it's inert. It's almost like you get, you buy some new gadget or technology, you take it out the box. 
you ain't about to use it immediately. The first directions they tell you, instructions they give you is they say, okay, charge this up for so and so hour, five hours, Mm -hmm. da 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 da. You know, and then even after that, you gotta start programming apps and putting information in Mm -hmm. and and then you can use it. Yeah. So you have to, you know, get the warranty, (laughs) you know what I'm saying, make your password, Mm -hmm. your email, your verification. And that's in the form of putting it in the sun. Because as I mentioned before, this contains a wide variety of what you call polyphenols. P-H-E-N means light. These are six-sided carbon rings that have the ability to absorb and store and soak sunlight in there. So it literally is just containing sunlight in it but when you put it in the sun, now the sun reacts with all those molecules and it wakes it up. So it's like the honey's sleeping until you do that. And when you do activate it, now whatever it was doing before, when it was in a sleep form for you, is about to take it to 10. Another level. Exactly. All right, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm even interviewing you, because I've seen so many of your interviews and they don't let you talk. I'm like, damn, he was about to tell us something else and somebody asked you something about Dr. Sebi. Uh, oh. That's a constant. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just trying to let you get all of this out. Well, I appreciate you. Nah, thank you for that, and it makes a lot of sense. So you, so when the people get the Nessu Nectar, mm-hmm. how long does that activation last? Do they need to activate it when they get home, or would that activation is good enough? So the Nessu Nectar, which is the name of the, the stingless bee honey um, that I carry, uh, one in the jar. And let me say this, people think, because I, ha- I have both sizes, I have the, the two ounce and I have the four ounce, mm-hmm. they think this is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, oh man, is the jar still the same? What's mm-hmm. the difference between the two? I'm like, one just has a dropper in it and it's half the size. So it just makes it easier for you to apply it to the eyes. And then one is just a larger size. You could refill or you could just use it on its own. And you got a third one coming, right? Yeah, I got a third one coming. I got a third one coming that, that Tekanu was on his way. No, no, no. I know the Tekanu is coming, but you have a third. Oh, you're talking about size. No, as far as the, because you, a lot of oh, people don't know yeah, you go yeah, to Honduras. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, a lot of people don't, the information an, you got. There's another version coming for the ladies. Oh, you don't yeah, want to talk yeah. about No, no, no. We could talk about it. We could talk about it. There's another version coming for the Speak ladies. On it. <laughs> So, you know, we started this off with the, with the woman and we got to, because we talking about bees, you yeah, know, yeah, all true, about true, the queen. True. And you see where we stand and we in the hive right now, just paying homage, you Facts. know. Um, but I wanted to make something specifically for the women so that they're able to apply it in their vagina easily. Because mm-hmm. the first question is, okay, how do I do it? Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. telling them, you know, wash your hands, you know what I'm saying, clean your hands off, uh-huh. stick, you know, put some honey on your fingers and just and apply it where it need to go. Yeah. But no, I'm gonna, I got these uh, customized applicators that I'm gonna have with it and it's gonna be able to draw the honey up and they're gonna be able to apply it down there and dose it over time. Is this just gonna be for women over 40 or? No, this is, this is for all adult women. We're gonna say women 18 and over. I'll even say 17. And over? Yeah, because anybody younger than that, they should need any problems down yeah, there yeah. at all. You know what I mean? Plus. You know, when we're children, and I, and I say this a lot because people want to give their children all of these herbs, and it's like, you just need to give your children like sea moss, the honey is good, light things like that. Um, because their body is strong, you know, their, their, their charge is high, the intelligence is there, they can heal themselves. As we get older, it's wear and tear. Okay. So we need a lot more, you we know what I'm that. saying? But children, they, they don't need as much as we do in order for them to get better. They actually need to go through their colds, their fevers, their flus, their sicknesses to get their body stronger, you know? So we don't need to like snuff out the flame. We need to let them go through that hardship because you know it, when you go through uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. that's what makes you stronger and deal with the environment better. Yeah. It's funny you say that because growing up, I was born in Brooklyn, Mm -hmm. but we spent our summers in Honduras. So when we go to Honduras, you know how in New York you come home, or in the United States you come home before you eat, your parents say, wash your hands. Mm -hmm. In Honduras, they said, don't wash your hands. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to eat with dirty hands. Right. But coming up, I never got a cold, because I guess that strengthened my immune system, I think. Right, right, right. Well. It's interesting you say that because they didn't say that when you was in Brooklyn, did they? Nah. 
Because <laughs> that's a whole nother dirty on your hands. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> You know, and no offense to New York, because I came up in New York, too. Like I same, came you know, up in Brooklyn, came up in Harlem Belgium, as well, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So not with nobody tripping like, oh, you hate. Um, but no, so it's funny because one of the things that vegans are um, deficient in is, is vitamin B12. And, and that's what, you know, a lot of people that eat meat, that's what they say. Oh, you know, y'all vegans, y'all aren't getting any vitamin B12 in. And it's like... Um, where do you get B12 from? You get it from bacteria. Bacteria actually convert uh, cobalt, right, which is a mineral, into cobalmin, which is vitamin B12. And that bacteria is on plants. So when we would have farms or when we would go out and forage or you go out and you plant and you get dirty in nature, a lot of that bacteria, mango trees. That's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. those are bacteria mm -hmm. that have converted it over and you're getting B12 on you. Okay. You know, um, and then, you know, you just introducing your body to the environment because Savi used to do this when he would travel to other countries. He wouldn't take the, the shots. Yeah. What he would do, he would go by a river. You knew about mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah, because when we went to Tanzania, mm -hmm. oh, when we were supposed to go to Tanzania, we had to uh, get some some shots. Right. And he would he use. No, no. We use Photoshop because <laughs> we got we got somebody else who got their shots and just changed the names and we was ready to rock and roll. But tell me, what did he use? Was it mud? So yeah, he would get the mud from the river because the mud would have all of the microbes from the environment he was going there in and he would take some of that. Like a, and now, what do they call it? They call it probiotics. So he been doing that, you know? Um, so that's what he would do instead of taking the shots. Oh man, I see. I, no, I didn't know that part. Mm -hmm. When I think of Sebi, you know what? Every time I see you, I always want, I always have to ask you that. We could just talk about it real quick. Why did Dr. Sebi slap your mother foot <laughs> when he met her? I'm glad uh, you didn't just start taking a pause uh, before a foot just a little bit longer. <laughs> so people be like, wait a minute, Sebi slapped her. Why did he slap her foot? Well, yeah, so. When my mother first met Dr. Sabi, it was in the jungle, like three in the morning, top on a full a moon at the top of a mountain. And, um, you know, I, t I tell this story all the time. I'm going to get into the details of, of how she got there. But after, after this meeting that she had, Sabi was doing one of his lectures in the middle of the jungle in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, my mom was blown away. You know, she had been searching for a teacher that was, you know, aligned with her spirit because she wanted to know more about the body, how to heal her family, how to heal her community, the natural way, and it was right in front of her face now. So she gets up and um, says bye, about to leave, and Sabi just grabs her foot and takes his hand, and you know Sabi's hands. Like Sabi could palm two basketballs, right? Right. right. And whack slapped the bottom of her foot and then looked in her eye, pulled the eye down and looked at the pink of the eye and then said, you anemic. And you know, she was like. Did she know at that time she was anemic? No, she didn't know at the time, but it was interesting because she was pregnant with me at the time and when she gave birth to me, that was her hemoglobin level was a two. So he was spot on. Her, knee, her, her iron was real low. What is it supposed to be? Your, your hemoglobin level for a woman is supposed, especially when you're pregnant, needs to be 18, 17, 18, maybe even 19 because you're dealing with a life. Men mm -hmm. are like 15, 16, somewhere around there. And it was but a, a woman's supposed to be 17. Hers was a two. You know? And hemorrhage, when I was born, I came in, in this world covered in blood. And it was a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I know people might be like, yo, why did Sabi slap her foot? Why did she he pull the eye down? And how did those two things tell him that she was anemic? So first we gotta understand what is anemia. And anemia means that we have low iron. And what do we need iron for? We need iron for hemoglobin. And what do we need hemoglobin for? We need hemoglobin in order to um, capture and transport the oxygen that we're constantly inhaling and breathing in. That oxygen has to get to the tissues of the body 
so that it could be used to liberate um, energy because the same way we go in uh, camping out in the country, we have to make a campfire. If there's no oxygen, there's no campfire. That's why you make the little, you know, the drift, the draft on the bottom so the airflow so can come, mm -hmm. right? Because if, if that's not there, it's going to snuff it out and there's going to be no fire. Same thing in our body. We need oxygen flow in order to keep the fire going because we're 98.6 degrees. We got to keep that furnace going. So when you don't have enough iron, you don't have enough oxygen, you don't have enough fire, thus you're cold, right? And people might say, oh, man, why women... Why women be walking around and be having, be looking so cold in their face? Why be looking so mean? Why don't they smile more? It's like they cold because they menstruating for two weeks. It's freezing. Losing all that blood, losing all that iron. So literally they cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, so warm them up. Mm -hmm. Just give them a hug. Mm -hmm. Compliment them. Sure. Make them feel better. I can you do know that. what I'm saying? <laughs> so if someone light skin, because Mr. G, you don't play. Somebody light skin tried you, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say your go-to in this moment was to just slap the taste out their mouth, right? Let's say not enough where they on the floor knocked out, okay? Uh -huh. What are you gonna notice about their face? What's the first thing you're gonna see gonna happen after you slap their face? Turn red. It's gonna turn red. Mm -hmm. And why does it turn red? Because mm -hmm. all the blood, the blood is gonna rush mm -hmm. to that area. So if you slap a woman at, on the bottom of their foot because the foot is an extremity, mm -hmm. this, this is the region where the blood has to go the furthest to deliver things, yeah, right? And the bottom of the foot is not the same color as the top of the foot, just like our palm. So you can see the change in color very easily. So you slap the foot, and if it does not turn red and it stays yellow, that means you have a problem with your blood flow and you have a problem with the iron levels in the bloodstream. And then in looking at the eye, the eye is supposed to, this flesh in here should be very pink. And when it's not pink, when it's real pale, that also shows there's a problem with the blood flow in the iron. So he was able to just visually observe those things and tell her something that was going on chemically in the body that most people need to go inside of an office and get a lab for. So when Dr. Sebi slapped your mama, <laughs> right. he was... It was for good reason. It was for good yeah, reasons. Yeah, yeah. Man, all right. I, you, most of the time at your lectures, I'm usually videotaping, and I would leave, come back, and I'm like, damn, I didn't, I missed it. So I just wanted you to explain that. So thank you for that, bro. Shout out to mama. Yeah, mama pill. She called me for my birthday the other day. So thank you, mama. Oh, yeah, you know she got you. All right. Um, all right, my next question is, you recently just came back from Honduras. Mm -hmm. um, I seen, I was, I was air hustling a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the brother was telling you about the honey, about taking it in the dark. Mm -hmm. What that mean? Once again, people are taken back when they find out that not only is the honey for the eye, but in order to help the eye, you have to actually put the honey in the eye, in the eye you know? So this is where the stingless bee becomes me capping because this is when you get a little sting. But it's not much, it's like, it's like cutting onions. You cut some onions, mm -hmm. you get a little, little burning sensation and you tear and it goes away. And hey, it's similar to that. I do it every three months. You know? I do. <laughs> not every three months. Just to keep, my, keep me straight. Keep you straight. So mm -hmm. you put the honey in the eyes, you close your eyes. And I usually tell people to like, spell your name. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Make X's, make O's, make T's, keep your mm -hmm. eyes closed and everything. But For in, how long? I tell them about, about between five and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we, we dealing with people that's on the move, but if, you're, if, you, if you have the time, the longer the better. Okay. You do 15 minutes, that's great. You do 20 minutes, that's good. You I know? usually do 15 minutes like right before I go to sleep when I do it. And then that's when you have the most vivid dreams. Yeah. So the reason why darkness makes sense is because people know that if you are in a lit area like this and you walk into a room that's dark, immediately you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Off the rip, you like, I can't see nothing. But if you stand there for a second, all of a sudden mm -hmm. you start notice, oh, there's a table over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the doorway. Oh, mm -hmm. there's that. And that's because you got rods and cones. Cones are for color, rods is for black and white. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to see in the dark 
based on shadow and certain differences in light and shading. But what allows this to happen, what allows this light to get to those rods is, a, is an ability that our eye has, which is called dilation. Mm -hmm. So our eyes can dilate, our pupil can dilate, meaning it can go from being small like this and open all the way up. Any photographer would understand that. The aperture, right? And, and anybody who takes mushrooms and looks in the mirror will know that too. Because <laughs> them things, your, your whole, the whole joint's almost black. Yeah. So the reason why taking the honey drops in the eye in the dark is actually the best way to do it is because you will die, your eyes will dilate and it opens up. Uh, uh, an old saying is a closed mouth don't get fed. So in taking the honey drops in a lit area, that's like the mouth of the eye, the pupil of the eye being closed, and you can get so much more benefits, so much more nutrients, so much more of an effect if you allow your eyes to dilate first and then apply the honey in the eye. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And your eyes mm -hmm. are your brain. Part of it. Just your brain yeah. on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's the only time you feed in your brain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. All right, let's get to gorilla mode. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> now, one of the reasons why I started, a, I have a new logo on my Instagram, on my YouTube. Yeah, that thing fire. Is the gorilla. Yes, yes, yes. That's for a lot of people who's actually taking my videos from my page and putting it on their page. There's a lot of people that I go to these events and they take pictures with me. And next thing I know, they're using my image endorsing their products. So, um, no bueno. it's not good at all. That kind of sounds like another group of people that came into this country. They just kind of came here, saw that there was folks here, ignored people was already here on this land, and then said they discovered America. And Talking about the chicken cutlets? Yeah, some, some about, right. it, it reminds me of that. <laughs> exactly. But these is your people, though. Who people? I'm saying, you know, our people. Oh, I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, who people? Yeah, not my people. <laughs> yeah, so I, I kind of, I wanted to let the people know I work with you directly, mm -hmm. and I work with Victor Bowman. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, it's like I created the gorilla because I'm about to start tagging everybody with it. So they taking your intellectual properties. And making it theirs. And making it their own w without asking you, without, without tagging you. But you know what makes anything. You know what makes it bad? because they have pictures with me at events. What that mean? Thank you. So, that, so what are they doing with the pictures? It's like a, a way of them, me co-signing their existing or their product. So they're taking, hey, Ms. G, can we take a picture real quick? Mm -hmm. Mostly at le your lectures. At my, because <laughs> <laughs> that's when people get to see me when I go out, you know. So they come to my lectures, they see, they see Mr. G there, they say, let me take a picture with him. Take the picture and then use the you skip, picture. You skip something. They come to le your lectures. They get your information. Then create a product. Hold on, bro. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, son. Okay. When did you first hear of Trey Hyulos? With you. Because when I met, okay, real quick, I could go back. Traveling with Dr. Sebi, when we came to Atlanta, mm-hmm. What's the brother name who interviewed him? Oh, uh, Wanik? Wanik. Wanik Shabazz. Wanik Shabazz. Shout out to Wanik Shabazz. Yes. Before we did the lecture at the Georgia World Congress Center, I think it's called. Yes. Dr. Sebi had just gave us some honey. Mm -hmm. That's why in the interview he talked about Mr. G and I. You talk about this honey? This honey. This honey. He didn't say nothing about Troy Hyalos. No, you know Dr. Sebi. He kept everything simple. Yeah, it's based on the experiences and what he what Yeah, he, he like, it's good for you. Take it. Take it. it. <laughs> Take right. it. So that's the first time I heard about the honey. Mm -hmm. So, um, but all, all what it does is when, you know, after seeing your lectures and stuff. Got you, got you, got you. So you, you, you hadn't heard about Trey Hyalo, so you heard me talking about it. Yes, sir. Right? And just online, period. There's no information talking about stingless bee honey, talking about all its effects for diabetes. You're able to use it, drop it in your ear in your for ear, ear infections. Mm -hmm. Tinnitus, which everybody's going through right now mm -hmm. because they put in the, the AirPods in their ears. 
And, and when they take them out, they're hearing all the ringing in the ears because the canal ain't supposed to be getting hit with that level of electromagnetic radiation constantly. Mm -hmm. So it helps with that. Um, um, uh, the women using it for their vagina and, and cleaning the vagina out. Mm -hmm. um, putting um, it on a wound healer. Put, I was gonna say putting it on their hands. I forgot to tell you this. Mm -hmm. um, this lady told me that after, I can't even say though. We can say the C word. Yeah, we can say what we want to say. After COVID, uh -huh. she was washing her hands or doing hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. She said all of the, she said that hand sanitizer was like chemotherapy because it got rid of the bad bacteria, but it got rid of the good bacteria as well. Yes, yes. So she was like, she started getting carpal tunnel after, wa after wiping her hands so much with the, she said, but after she started putting honey on it, she started getting feelings back in her hand. That's right. Because it, it, because it's water soluble, it's able to get deep into the skin and go straight into the blood. Whether you ingest it, put it in your skin or put it in your eyes, it's getting in there. All right, so I don't want to get deep into the COVID, but everything they told us to do to prevent it hurt us. But Max. now that you bring the COVID up, one of the main things that the stingless bee honey is known for is it knows how to bind with the spike protein to cleanse it out. Because right now, you know, people are talking about all the different ways you could go about getting the spike protein out your body. Detox, detox, detox. This is from, from taking the Vaseline. <laughs> okay. We just yeah. gonna call it the call Vaseline, Vaseline, you know, right. people that took the Vaseline. Mm -hmm. And now that they took the Vaseline, even when I went down to Honduras, because initially when I got this honey, that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. I was wondering why I saw all these people lined up. You would have thought it was 1977 and Star Wars was they just giving dropping. away free money. You yeah. would have thought the Jordan 3000s was coming out. You know what I'm saying? You would have thought there was an iPhone 67 drop or something. Damn. Everybody was lined up. And when I went over there to find out, yo, why is everybody lined up? I mean, I know I was there to go get honey. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they was there for it. They was all in line for the honey. And then I'm like, okay, why is everybody getting the honey like that? And they was like, oh, we're detoxing from the Vaseline. Flushing it out their system. So this is when I learned mm -hmm. that that's what it did. And then I started doing the research to find out exactly how it does it. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways to be able to cleanse it out, because I've been able to help a lot of people. We talking about uh, clients, even some high profile celebrities that needed assistance. At your lecture in New York, you blessed that man with 700. 750 milligram, yeah, because we did a we did a, a, a giveaway mm -hmm. at the end of the messenger, yeah, um, and you know we did some some trivia and yeah, and he won, you know, and everybody was looking at him sideways. They wanted to get him. Everybody door. looking at him. Like, Yo. I was like, "Yo, this is so old man. This is an OG, this is an elder, bro. Mm -hmm. Let him let him rock, man. He he's gonna use this. He's and and now I could I could say that he's going on 25 years old after taking all that honey. He's looking now. good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I say all that to say that I've been putting and doing all this hard work, not just getting the honey, not just providing the honey to the people, because this Sabi was never able to provide it to the people. Big shout out to Victor. Victor has been able to go around and, and provide it in the ways in his lectures so people can experience it in their eyes. But in just Victor. Yeah, just, just Victor. Victor. <laughs> On, right. Only Victor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now, you got all these people popping up, selling stingless bee honey, or talking about the information and not tagging me, not sourcing mm -hmm. me, not saying, oh, you know, thank, thank you, KT, for doing all this hard work, providing this information. Now we know more about this honey because of the work that you did, mm -hmm. you know? And me coming after Dr. Sabi, like you wouldn't ignore Sabi, like you bring Sabi's yeah, names true, true, true. up, you know, because it's a trigger word, you know what I'm saying? It's clickbait. Mm -hmm. So you'll mention him, you'll mention my father in a minute, mm -hmm. right? But then you ain't gonna mention me. Yeah. And I'm the one that's me and Victor, Gave you know, all we, we up here carrying this torch, mm -hmm. keeping this thing burning. But back to you, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I'm going off on a tangent. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just for me to be able to relate to what you're going through yeah. because they taking these, they taking pictures and using the pictures to say, oh yeah, this is my man. He's, he, he's vouching for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So whatever product I'm selling, whatever I'm selling, 
you need to get it because, you know, Mr. G is a stand up guy. Yeah. And, and I, I got, I'm in a picture with him. So, you know, what I got is official. And to that, you say, no, nah, it's at a point right now where I'm not even I'm feeling funny about taking pictures with people. I got to see what they're about and before that. Now I see why a lot of people don't just take pictures with everybody. But I just wanted to talk about that real quick. Man, that's, that's, that's wild. And it's funny because the thing about your footage is you, you put your, your tag, your logo on all of them. So, so how, how, do, how does your images get on other platforms but your logo's not there? And what they don't, what a lot of people don't know that you can cover my logo, but my, my logo is still there. Cause I, I have a way of hiding my logos in my, in my intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So I could just tell you, zoom in right there. Look at the camera, look in Dr. Sebi eyeballs, what you see, <laughs> you get it? So it's always, no. so even people say, no, nah, this is not for me. Not I got it from the nano watermarks I up do, in that boy. I do it on everything I ever put online, hey. everything. Right. So. The last time you was on my live. Oh, it was your live, huh? Yeah, you had, you had a little platinum going on in that beard. You know what I'm saying? So, was that some Bantana that did that? <laughs> how, you, how you get that thing black again? Great question. What happened was, it was Bantana. Okay. I started putting Bantana on my beard and it was, it was turning it black. It was going from white to, to gray, then it started turning beige. Mm. Then it started turning like brownish. Right. So when I looked in the mirror, it was looking like that honey right there. <laughs> you had like I eight like, tones. Yeah, going. I was like, yo. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'ma just, it's taking too long. Cause I was, I'm in the pictures and my daughter was like, dad, what's going on with your beard? So yeah, I dyed it, but I didn't have the time to wait on the baton to get it black. But it was, it was, I can't even say re-dyeing your beard. It was recoloring, it was re Taking it back to his neck. Giving exactly. your color back his pigment. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Now, we just started talking about Bantana. Like, I know, I know. Because we know what it is. So, <laughs> true, true. You know, what, what is Bantana? Actually, Bantana is something that you put me on to. Me? Yes. Me? But you're from Honduras, though. I don't give a, I don't care. <laughs> I, don't care. <laughs> I was actually, I was in, I was in, um, I ain't gonna say the part of Honduras. I was in Honduras yeah. and the brother came up to me and he told me, he asked me about Batana and I was like, what's that? And I was like, let me call my brother in the United States, he's gonna know. Mm -hmm. And when I hit you about it, I was like, yo, KT, you know what Batana is? And you're like, what, are you kidding me? And you could tell us better about what Batana is than I can. Yeah, as soon as, soon as you called me and asked me about it, I was like, I was like yeah, you bro, because I was like, that was like, a, that was like the golden egg because of all that it does. So one of the main things is Batana helps with our hair. So we know yeah. that one thing that sets us aside from all of the phenotypes and groups of people is the, wear, the way our hair grows. Mm -hmm. You know, people call it non-ether. You say curly, we talk about the coil, but it grows a particular way, it has a particular texture to it. Mm -hmm. Very lush, very full, very thick. That's mm -hmm. how our hair grows. Like that. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of, kind, kind of like uh, that, yeah, yeah. So people want to, especially women, right? Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that their hair stays healthy, but we have situation where hair is thinning. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the, the main things a lot of women deal with is the fact they lose their edges. You know what I mean? They don't have no edges no they more. Get it back. Right. Mm -hmm. So what Bontana does is it helps to regrow hair. You can have bald spots. It's gonna regrow that. If it's thinning, it's gonna make it thicker. And like you just stated, if you're actually losing the color and going gray, mm -hmm. it's going to add pigment back to yeah. the hair. Which is deep because the reason why our hair is black is because we got stem cells in our scalp. And the stem cells are, are based on these cells called melanocytes and they make melanin. Mm -hmm. And the melanin gets pumped into the shaft of the hair. And then that's how the hair turns black. So when we go gray, it's because the stem cells, it gets oxidized. They're not making new, new cells no more. So that means the bantana is actually stimulating the creation of new stem cells in the scalp. Um, you can also consume the bantana as well and it helps to get rid of asthma out the lungs. People that smoke. Yeah, people that mm -hmm. smoke, it helps mm -hmm. to knock the habit. 
And then um, because of it being a saturated fat, one of his properties, it has saturated fat in there. This is the fat that goes solid at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So most oil, olive oil, you know, that, that we normally use, is still liquid at room temperature. Mm -hmm. But if you take something like coconut oil and you sit that on the solid, counter, yeah. it's going to get solid. So saturated fats help with testosterone levels. So we have something that's going to help with the hormones of the body. It helps with the asthma and the strength of the lungs. And then it also helps with the pigmentation and the health of the hair. But lastly, you can put it on your skin. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking earlier about activating the honey. Mm -hmm. You put that Bontana on and go out in that sunlight. Yeah. Oh, you got a whole nother mm -hmm. gold shine coming off your skin from that. And another thing that I found out when I went to Mosquitia, where, it's, where it comes from, they cook with it over there. They cook their platanos. Or That's right. All their food. Yeah. All their food. Because when the lady asked me, why are you buying so much? And what you doing with it? And I said, for the skin and for the hair. She said, y'all don't cook. That's it? Y'all don't cook with it? Y'all don't. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you can do that. And then it's going to add all that flavor to it because it has that, that kind of coffee, mm -hmm. kind of burnt sugar smell to it. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to add to the food. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's something about 15 days with the Bantana. What does oh. 15 got to do with Isn't that crazy how similar to the honey? Right. They have to leave it in the, the, the actual beads before they extract the oil from it. The kernels that they get off of the, the tree. They have to leave it in the sun for 15 days, 15 days in order for them to get Bantana oil from it. So the oil's actually produced from the sun. Sun gel. Sun Another gel. Another form of sun gel. Right, right, right. So we got two forms. <laughs> ah, that's great. So. So I think you got, that's it right there, right? Sure. What you call it? I call it blue magic. Blue magic. The reason I call it blue Please magic. Please tell these people. Because <laughs> my son and I, we had to go to the jungle. We took an eight hour car ride and we thought we was there. Well, first of all, before you took a car ride, you had to take a flight. Let's come on. Let's yeah, go. Well, we flew from, well, I flew from New York. My son flew from New Orleans. Right. So you yeah. hours on the plane already. That's number one. Okay. And my son is a captain in, in the U.S. Army, so that's where the whole Denzel, the Army going to. Right, right, right. So we get to the spot, and they, we get the Sambo, and they tell us that we have to go to Bataya. Bataya is like eight-hour drive ride, uh, eight-hour eight car ride. So at the end of this eight-hour car ride, we thinking we there, and they said no. There's no cars that could go to Mosquitia. Mm. Now we have to get inside a, a, a little boat with one engine and do six hours to um, Mosquitia in the rain. I, I, um, I sent you the video. So, so plane, then, then you got to get, then you have to ride to Sambo. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's four hours. That's four or five right there. Mm -hmm. Then eight hours. Then the boat hours, how long? Six hours. Six hours. That's yes. a whole day. Yes, exactly. Of none but travel. And we ain't talking about sitting in first class the whole way either. No, no, we sitting in <laughs> a, on a log with a motor on it. Wow, going down river. And as you going down river, I mean, it's just trees and stuff? Or is it like people like looking at you? Well, most of it is just open water. But when you get closer, closer to Mosquito, you start seeing the people from Mosquitia with the long hair. We've seen some beautiful women with buns and they let the bun out. Why do they have long hair down to their feet? What are they using? Batana. Ah. If you Google the people of Mosquitia, they said the people with beautiful with hair. Beautiful hair. And I've seen some amazing people there. So you pretty much going through what Frank Lucas had to go through. That's why I call it blue right, magic. Right, right. But exactly. you're bringing back Montana, though. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're helping folks. Bringing back Montana, <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> so you got that at the Alkaline Oasis. Yes, yeah. at the Alkaline, Alkaline Oasis. And we have it on the website as well. Yeah. Um, blue What's the Ma website? BlueMagicBatanaOil.com. Um, dot com. So they could get the blood. They could get it there. Yes, sir. They could get it there. Oh, man. Oh, man. I want to talk to you about something very important and powerful. Okay. Um, one thing that I know is close and dear to you, more than anything that I know of, is, is your sister Eva. Yes. Um, and you referenced her in your book. The, the book starts off with her, dedicate the book to her. She's and where all this started. Mm -hmm. This is how it all started because 
uh, Eva had an issue. She had a health issue. And you went to Dr. Sabi to help her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if people read the book and, and they listen to your interviews, they'll find out that Sabi was actually able to help Eva out. 100%. But that was some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, can you update us on Eva's condition as of now? Yeah. Um, Eva, Eva passed away. Oh, my condolences. Sebi was able to help her, thank God. Eva was, they said she wasn't going to see 2015, but Eva passed away in 2020. Um, the reason we didn't know, because Eva was, she moved to Honduras. I used to tell you, she make her own food. She was an alkaline chef. Mm -hmm. So we was wondering, July 29th, 2020, mm -hmm. was the day my mother passed away a year prior. Eva received some news that we didn't know about. Okay. Um, the family was always wondering, why did Eva eat all this food that she, she knew wasn't good for her? Recently, and that's why you don't know, recently, about maybe four months ago, we found out that Eva found out that her husband had another woman. Wow. Eva also found out that... Um, my niece, Shanice, she had just told her, um, because her husband was not Shanice's biological father. So she found out that this man was molesting her. So it was like, um, I think she know, she know what the food was going to do to her. She just didn't want to be here anymore. So like, I want to take this time to tell anybody who got any kids with women go through so much that we don't know about. Just because you see everybody smiling, you don't know what this woman is going through. I ain't smile. Yeah, so anybody who have any men around their kids, women, female kids. Watch them. Watch them. If your baby like tried to, shit, my niece tried to tell me that she tried to tell her mother and her mother was like, you probably, you probably misunderstood what he was trying to do. You gotta believe these kids. So Eva passed away in 2020, and we believe it was she, because we was wondering in Honduras why she wasn't. ate all this food. Right, right, right. She ate chicken. She ate hot dogs. She ate tres leches. It's like a, it's like three, a three, three milk, three, three milk, milk cake. Yeah. yeah, anything, everything she knew that she wasn't supposed to eat, she ate it, and she passed away two days later. And she told, and then we found out that my older sister told her. Um, she told my sister, don't re re um, resuscitate or just let me go. And that's something that my big sister kept from us. We didn't know. So that, that's the situation with Eva. And, it, and what was so, because I meet so many people, like after I did the interview on The Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. the first thing they asked me, how your sister doing? Of course. And whatever mood I'm in, it just knocked me down. So I just want to take. No idea, I want to take this moment. So anybody who's seen my Breakfast Club interview or seen my Tasha K interview, like my sister's no longer with us, but you know, we still going. Well, I want to extend love, light, and gratitude to you as well as to your sister because the reason why I sit before you today and you're the person you are and the character you are has everything to do with your sister. Yes, sir. She shaped and carved and cultivated you into the person that you are today, and I've all, I'll always be indebted to her. So may she rise in power. First of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to interview you. Like I told you, I've seen so many of your interviews, and they didn't let you talk, and I be wanting to break my computer, break my TV. So thank you for sharing your knowledge, and thank you for everything that you do for me and my family, man. Um, and um, just thank you for being you, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter in your life. Hey, I appreciate that, brother. And you know the feeling's mutual. Yes, sir. I want to appreciate you for manning me up. You know what <laughs> I mean? You're the, you're, you're the example of a man that everybody wants. 
as a role model to be able to stand strong in a world like this that we're in. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for inviting me into your family. And I know I'm not allowed to say that because I am family. <laughs> I you was about to say, yo. <laughs> what you talking about? Explain it to you already. You know, to your mm -hmm. home and helping my family out, giving me advice. I appreciate our friendship and our brotherhood. And I look forward to everything we got in the future, man. All right. I love you, bro. Love you too, okay? All right.